the code that you see on the right side of your screen contain, contains the beginning of the class definition for the class named Prob01Runner. Note that this class definition does not have an access modifier to the left of the keyword class. This causes this class to fall in the package private access category. If you don't specify an access modifier when you define a new class you get package private access by default. A class with package private access can be accessed by code that is stored in the same package and cannot be accessed by code that is stored in other packages. So here's a question. What is a package? And the answer is that a package is a specification of a particular folder on the disk relative to a standard root folder. Now let's turn our attention to the last three lines of code on the right hand side of your screen. These three lines of code declare three private variables. Because these variables are declared to be private, they can only be accessed by code contained in methods that are defined inside the same class. There is one exception to that rule. Private variables can also be accessed by code contained in methods defined in classes which in turn are defined inside the class containing the variables. That is what we call inner classes. A study of inner classes is beyond the scope of this course, but I do take it up in the next course in my sequence of three Java courses. These three variables are also what we call instance variables as opposed to class variables. I will ex explain class vari variables in a future lesson. These three variables are called instance variables because they belong to an object that was instantiated from the class. Recall that Java jargon says that an object is an instance of a class. Even if these variables were declared public, they could only be accessed by first gaining access to the object to which they belong. And you will recall that the only way to gain access to an object is to acquire a reference to the object. If you were to instantiate multiple objects of this same class, each object would encapsulate the set of three private instance variables shown on the right side of your screen. Right there. Instance variables have the same names in each of the objects to which they belong, but they may have different values in different objects instantiated from the same class. We also say that the three vari variables declared in listing 2 on the right of your screen are also reference variables as opposed to primitive variables. 
reference variables can store reference references to objects but cannot store primitive values. Similarly, primitive variables can store primitive values but cannot store references to objects. Java has eight primitive types which appear in this list. Char, byte, short, int, long, float, double, and boolean. All eight of these primitive types are numeric types with the exception of boolean and the boolean type in Java is a true boolean type and can only contain values of true or false. A Java application consists almost exclusively of objects. We've said before that objects are instances of classes. Therefore, class definitions must exist before objects can exist. We don't have a chicken and egg problem in Java. Absolutely, the class definition must exist before the object can be constructed. The Java programming language is small and compact. The true power of Java lies in its libraries of predefined classes. The Java Standard Edition Development Kit and Runtime Engine that is available from Sun, I suppose now available from Oracle, contains a library consisting of thousands of predefined classes. Other class libraries containing thousands more classes are available from Sun in the Enterprise Edition and the Micro Edition. In addition, you or your company may create your own class libraries or you may obtain class libraries from other sources such as the class library that we have obtained from Barb Erickson at Georgia Tech University that we are using in this course. In almost all cases you will need to define a few new classes for a new application that you write. In fact, you will always have to define at least one new class and that is the class that contains the main method that you learned about earlier. We will define and use two new classes for this application.